Hey PlayStation fans, I figured we'd start Friday off with something really interesting. The PlayStation 2 CPU power caused military concerns because apparently it was so powerful. The military and the government of Japan thought it could be used in weapon systems. It was that powerful back in the day. Yes, we're talking about the old PS2. God, I love the design of the PS2, don't you? I wish PlayStation could almost go back. I feel like the PlayStation 2 was peak PlayStation design back in the day. Anyways, I'm Blaze2K. Like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. Your support means the world. If we can hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, probably impossible. It would be really cool. And check the links down below in the video description for all the best tech I use as a YouTuber and all the best tech I recommend daily, day to day. So this article stemmed from, or so this video stemmed from this article I saw, PlayStation 2 CPU power caused military concerns back in the day. Now the article goes on and it gets sidetracked with Final Fantasy 7 and talking about the developers and the stuff that they had to go through in terms of getting Final Fantasy 7 to work on the PS2. But I figured we'd talk about this in terms of the military side of what happened. So back in the early 2000s, shortly after the PS2's Japanese launch on March 4th, Japan's trade ministry slapped export controls on the console and it it's bundled 8 megabyte memory card classifying them as general purpose products related to conventional weapons. This meant that Sony needed special government permits to ship PS2s abroad if the value exceeded about $472. And the concern? Well, the PS2's Emotion Engine, the CPU, 294 MHz, 128 bit, 64 bit processor with dual vector units, was insanely powerful for its era, delivering up to 6.2 gigaflops of floating point performance and at the time that was insane this made it excel at parallel tasks like rapid 3d processing perfect for games but also suspiciously good for military apps like missile guided systems um basically real-time analysis of camera feeds to adjust rocket trajectories ps2s were that freaking powerful it was the first game console hit with japan's foreign exchange and foreign trade control law amid the broader fears of rogue states like north korea or iran repurposing civilian tech for weapons <laughs> sony downplayed it quickly secured permits and the restrictions were eased by april ps2 hit north america on october 26 2000 as planned eventually selling 155 million units and the u.s mirrored this with mirrored this with bans to embargo nations like iraq iran libya and North Korea um, and apparently get this in December 2000 panic spiked with reports that Iraq smuggled 4,000 to 20,000 PlayStation 2s to network into a supercomputer for drone control missile aiming or nuke sims how crazy is that Anyways, later on, obviously, Intel um, dismissed it. PS2s lacked OS flexibility, I.O. for clustering, and were outclassed by cheap PCs for real military work. No evidence it happened, but the rumor wasn't baseless given raw power. This was covered by PC Mag and WCCF Tech. Um, a, fun, a fun first hand tale in 2000, Final Fantasy um, IX event designer. Kahuiko Aoki was in Hawaii testing Final Fantasy IX on a PS2. Sony tried shipping a dev kit, but export rules delayed it for weeks. A very difficult situation since the CPU was so over overpowered it risked military diversion. Ironically, to Sony's 2002 Linux kit let hobbyists turn PS2s into mini PCs. Can you imagine if Sony did that now? If they just let us run Windows or Linux on our PlayStation, like back back in the PS3 era. Does anyone remember that? You were able to run full Linux on your PlayStation 3. Sony needs to go back to that, and we are going back to that. Xbox is actually going to be shipping the next-gen Xbox with the Windows um, late in a couple of years when they release the new Xbox, which is going to be wild. You're going to be able to run whatever you want on it. It's going to be absolutely nuts. But God, I miss back when Sony did cool things like that. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did you use your PS2 as a weapon system? Let me know your, your thoughts in the comments. Another interesting fact is that the US Air Force actually built a PS3 supercluster called Condor back in 2010 with, I believe, about 1,700 units and 500 teraflops, proving concerns prescient just a uh, console gen late. Prescient? Having or shown knowledge of events before they take place. 
Hmm. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, clicking the bell icon if you thought that story was kind of interesting and if it brought back some nostalgia for the PlayStation 2. Obviously, PS2 was close to my heart. It was one of my favorite consoles of all time. PS1, PS1, PS2, PSP, obviously um, Xbox 360, different company, but still one of my favorite of all time, favorites of all time. But yeah, PlayStation used to innovate a lot back in the day when it comes to their hardware, right? I mean, the fact that c countries were trying to smuggle hundred, like thousands, tens of thousands of PS2s in the possibility of using them as like a supercomputer cluster for like weapon systems is just bananas. But it's a true story. Anyways, like, subscribe, click the bell icon. I love you. I'll see you in the next one on Place2K. Peace. Let's go.